Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. This is a television series, I believe on the Prime Network, or Amazon Prime, I guess. Now, I'll probably re be releasing this on Christmas, so Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and have an awesome Christmas and an amazing holiday season. Now, getting to the show, I'm a big fan. Uh, most people should know this. Well, my huge droves of fans might not. There's a uh, little kid in me that just wants to really like things and that really his heart opens up to these fantasy type things. And as a fan of the Lord of the Rings movies, they're probably, to me, one of the best trilogies ever made. Individually, they're amazing movies. Now, the Hobbit movies, I enjoy, but they're not my go-to, I'm going to really immerse myself. But I do enjoy them. So as much criticism as they get, and somewhat deservedly so, in, to some aspect, I enjoy everything so far. Now, I even enjoy the cartoons, and I happen to have read almost everything having to do with Tolkien up to... I don't know, let's just say 2010 when I stopped collecting comic books. It's that same time. But I've read the uh, Cimmerillion, the uh, Untold Tales 1 and 2, like the, all the appendices, all the stuff. So I have a pretty good grasp of the world in general, rather than someone coming at it from a new perspective. And I also have role-played in the Lord of the Rings world, be it from friends who had actual lore in the books, to a general have fun, just visit the world of Middle Earth. So I cover my bases in all my, you know, nerd categories. And again, I'm a big fan and I really want things to work. And I will give things a pass. And I'm going to give this show a pass. I think I'm going to recommend this show. I'm going to say that I enjoyed the journey. However, I don't know if all... John, of all people from all works of life who aren't as hmm, who aren't as steeped in the knowledge or the law or the you know just a general fandom of Tolkien or fantasy are gonna say this is a great show because I'm not there yet. I can't say this is a great show. I'm gonna give it a first season pass in that look. There's talented actresses and actors throughout this whole thing. Some amazing cinematography, you know, good use of sets and the believability of a world you're immersed in. So I'm going to give it a plus. And by the way, you, I've, one of my greatest novels ever, or series, is the Shannara series. And what they did to Terry Brooks' stuff, I think it was a disaster. But there are elements... Where you do find yourself, or me personally, a little confused and astounded at what their decisions were. So again, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, a eight episode first season on Amazon Prime. I enjoyed it. I I was intrigued hearing about the journey, and I'm um, I'm on board for a, a season two. But I still don't understand some of the decisions that were made, and maybe it's post Game of Thrones that is really influencing things that I don't enjoy so much. So I've said this before: I'm not the biggest. I'm not a big fan of Game of Thrones, neither the books or the TV show. And I think the TV show are better than the books. So if I'm not that enjoyable about the TV show, well, you know, I'm not going to give too much high praise. However, I do recognize greatness. I do recognize the things people loved about that show. Hell, I love some aspects of that show. The actors, the writing, the scenes. I mean, it, it, it went from shitty, uh, you know, views and stuff and built up an audience and improved. However, they still relied on a storytelling method that I can't get into. And I think this show is doing that. It's just I'm a little, you know, maybe used to it, or I'm a little, you know, forgiving. And what I mean is, 
You want to do like six stories, in depth stories with characters. And first of all, Tolkien has enough characters that the names are hard to pronounce and get, you know, in your Rolodex of your brain of just coming out flowingly. And everything, they want to touch everything. That could be a problem. I mean, we've got the elves, the dwarves, the so called hobbits, and the humans, and past of the past and the present. It's not so hard. Like, there are shows that have done things excellent where they do chapters. And I'm going to lean towards that's what the show should have done. You should have really gotten to the heart and to the meat and the characterization. And then did maybe some chapter stuff. And built on it. But what, what we want to do is go from episode to episode. Mind you, eight episodes the first season. An hour long episode, roughly, a little bit more here and there. And it's just bloated with stuff. And some of the stuff is great. And some of the stuff in its own capsule is pretty damn good. Bordering on amazing. But when it's laid out with, I gotta jump back and forth. Now this is one of the things about Game of Thrones I did not care about. And it lost me by season 3. When season 4 Game of Thrones came around, I cared. I couldn't care. I didn't want to get involved in things and watch things for 2-3 weeks. Not see what's going on. Wait for someone else to come around that I liked. And they pulled it off with a mass audience now. I think they shit the bed towards the end. Because I did watch it all. But I think that their motivations were true. And, you know, these are visions that people want to tell their stories. And I get what they're doing here. They want to involve the rings of power. How they were forged. And what was going on with the last alliance. With the, you know... Elves and men, you know, the hint of the dwarves and some great actors, some great portrayals here. Music gives you a little bit of, you know, that feel. It it works in general. And is and I, I really am captivated by certain actors and certain themes. But when I put it all together and I'm watching it from episode to episode, I'm like, why bother with the Hobbit stuff and the mysterious stranger? Why don't you do that in chapter, like episode three? And just really nail it. No, you got this by episode six or seven. You don't know what's going on with them. Then they come back. And it's the twist to reveal who's this, who's that. And it, you've got deep building up of characters that get cut off. Again, as someone who's not a big fan of Game of Thrones... That show couldn't help me get through. It was a struggle from fucking beginning to end. This is that same formula almost. Like post Game of Thrones, you've got to do certain things and it's a new formula. And I get it. Like things change. Like my uh, cop shows back in the day aren't the same as the cop shows now. And, you know, society, we're all moving forward. We're, you know, and I get it. But. Tone it down. You should be able to get a moderate uh, appraisal and criticism of season one and improve it. So that's another reason why I'm interested in season two. Like, this has the hallmarks of a really top quality show. It does, but it does things foolishly that make me want to, like, say, Jesus fucking Christ, like, sometimes. I just don't want to be bogged down with this one. I want to be there. And if that's a technique storytelling now, I get it. Right? But you got to let things breathe and settle. When you want me to really love Galadriel, they invest in it and I start to be won over. And I'm not just talking about the actors' portrayal. It's, they are characterizing these characters in a certain light. It's thousands of years before the movies that we've seen. Well, close to a thousand for, let's say, The Hobbit and such. Or even that's a wishy-washy thing here. Because they are playing with about a thousand years of lore and condensing it for a, a story. And I get it. It's, it can't be super easy, and I know. But I think you should have started off with an in-depth one, two, three episodes. 
combine two stories, and then let it grow. Like, let season two expand and grow. Do your spinoff series. It's just like, whatever your plans are. Because this apparently got... Well, let's first say, you know, it was, a, it was a lawsuit from the beginning. Settled with the movie the- movie studios and whatever. And then the rights, who can get them. Peter Jackson was just like a, um advisory guy. And then it was settled and this pitch won. Because people wanted to do the appendix stories about Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas. Which, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that later. Like, you can, you can easily do that. But, again, you, you gotta have... Like, I think people are assuming there's a certain pace they have to do, and it's okay that, you know, audiences are sophisticated enough or caring enough to get through these episodes where you're running five or six storylines and give me a little bit of each and give me somewhat important things to flesh out, but don't pay off. Now, there is one thing that drove me fucking nuts, and there's a spoiler alert coming, but how the fuck do you pull a magic trick on... Everybody in the show and everybody who's watching the show and you don't think people are going to fucking... Because I guarantee you right now I go online because I tend to avoid these things before I do my podcast. Okay, so here's the spoiler alert. There's an item that the evil people are looking for. It's a hilt of a sword, but it's really a key. Blah, 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 blah. And it'll, whatever it'll do, it'll do. We'll, ooh, we don't know. This story centering around the, the thing gets bogged down, and there are some weak aspects to the show, and involves certain actors and characters. Now, anything can be improved, like The Wheel of Time was a show I did that showed promise, but you know you want to be tempered there with what is you know, being put on the screen and what, what would be given fed. And this just keeps up in the ante too much where you got too much going on, you, you want to be invested in one thing and it's bringing you to another. And there's a fucking key item that is, is super important. It's, it's the focus of so much of the show in that area that it focuses. Because remember, it's like six or seven, so it's just one aspect. They try to uh, eat their cake and have it too. So whatever the saying is, because that's how you're supposed to say it, but you have the main villain, or supposedly the main villain of the show so far, gets his, he wins, he gets into this place after some crazy great stuff, he corners this uh, city or village of people, gets into their last stronghold defense, breaks through, physically starts killing the people there, and wants his item, which he's looking for. Blah, 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 they give it to him. Now, you wanted this moment, you wanted the film, you wanted this interaction, you wanted these moments to happen, and then you want the cavalry to arrive. Which is fine, but they should have arrived to everybody dead. You, you can't keep me in this moment where you want these this actors and these, these components to meet because the elf was great. I love the elf in this guy. I forgot his name. But... He's, you know, protecting, he loves a human, and he's protecting them, and he's, you know, he was captured by them and let go, and he was given a message, go, tell them to bow to me, blah, blah, blah. And you get this guy, but you don't realize the, you know, subtleties of things, because once the cavalry comes, and mind you, they're in the same room, it's the last room, the last holdout room, and before the cavalry arrives, he's killing them indiscriminately, just torturous killing and he's threatening him where's my thing where's my thing and the kid loves his mom so he gives it up fine worked okay now you got this whole situation the cavalry arrives and these people survive not only do they survive the main villain gets caught by a combination of things too much spoilerish stuff there I don't like doing it too much but and you know I knew it was bullshit so first off I knew the whole stranger plot, what, what the reveal would be, and I knew the whole, the old Lord Hanrod, whatever reveal was going to be. 
because I knew, again, spoilers in these appendixes and these untold stories, kind of what happens. That, you know, Sauron in a guise is kind of responsible for them creating the Rings of Power type thing and how did that happen type stuff. And so anyway, we've got this seemingly villain at a, um, you know, one of the first Uruk, uh, because the first orcs were, were elves captured and twisted. Anyway, he gets caught, the item gets taken, and we are looking at a moment of victory. Um, you know, a la Gandalf comes with the, you know, the Rohim and saves Helm's Deep type thing. And it works, and it's a great scene, and there's some great stuff. So now, you're set up with, they've got these people, well, people, the orcs, some of them left over, and they've got the main villain kept alive, and they made a thing about it, like, you should die, you don't know what you did. Well, let's keep them alive, we need them alive. A little bit of an interrogation scene, and... Again, this item, this sword, this key is a major part of the story. It has to do with the uh, child of Brown, Bronwyn, um, some kind of healer, you know, from the humans. And these humans were being watched by the elves, and the elf falls in love with her, that type thing. And it's a major thing on what it's going to do, what it can do with the kid. And it falls short in that aspect, I'm going to admit. I wasn't enjoying that. But... Here we are. We've got this item. It gets wrapped in whatever. Canvas, you know. And it's a topic of discussion. And not only is it a topic of discussion, Galadriel gives it to the elf. Now the elf knows that the son of the woman he's in love with has been through a lot, and they have this conversation. He lets the kid, he says, look, you have to let this go. Because the kid has touched the power. It went into his blood and it formed this. So, anyway, let's get to the real bullshit. He hands the kid the package. The kid looks at it and he realizes it's not um, triggering his, because he has a cut. And the blood triggers the fucking magic. He opens it up. And the package is revealed to be an axe. So, someone substituted this super insanely important plot derived item that everything circles around someone did a switcheroo and you see the fucking guy who did the switcheroo the fucking asshole from the village who revealed himself to the kid that he was a servant of Sauron and I could hear a collective gasp from everywhere because it's not fucking touched on it's not revealed okay You've shown elves could see fucking miles. They're fucking agile. Like, they've got all these abilities. And not only common sense abilities, wartime abilities. By this point, Galadriel's a commander of the armies. Now, she might not be the stoic, uh, reserved queen that Frodo meets and is tempted by the ring. But it's the journey where she's getting in. I'm, I'm buying it for the most part. But come on. She has the fucking item. She wraps it up knowing. She gives it to the elf who his whole mission was to protect this town from it. He decides, hey, kid, give this to the Numenors. Let them go back and they'll drop it in the ocean. No one will ever see it again. Yeah, sure, okay. He pats him on the shoulder and he opens the fucking thing. It's, it's a fucking axe. They've been hoodwinked. The fucking nut fucking guy jerk off from the town, puts the key in, turns it, and boom! We've got the fucking Mordor fucking... A volcano and calamity happens, and I'm like, you gotta be fucking shitting me! Like you couldn't get there better. Pl- you couldn't get there better. You want me to believe and go back and look and try to figure out how that fucking item got switched and no one noticed? You're talking about el- an elf is holding it. Galadriel's holding it. Just stop. You just fucking shit on all that story. And it almost, it lost all its weight, like, what? You couldn't do a real super reveal and, like, make the mother the evil part? Like, you couldn't do something really convincing? This guy comes out of fucking nowhere, he just has it. And, like, 
I'm gonna go back and scour fucking footage by frame by frame to see, like, did he do a switcheroo? And you know what? It fucking annoyed the fucking shit out of me. And it's one of the major reasons why I can't, like, I wouldn't give this a 10 or a fucking 8. Like, I, I can't. I can't. Now, if it's my own stupidity, I have to do have to go back and watch it. It better be fucking good. It better not be just what it appears to be. Stupidity and plot convenience and bullshit. That's a major fucking thing. And I'm telling you right now, you got people who are like real savvy with this shit. And I could see this being a real fucking sticking point. And then you got two episodes left of the season and they're trying to put things together. And you're like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? The stranger's back. Like, the stranger's back. Oh, let's do his sort of reveal. It's just. I sometimes I get confused at these templates they use and like I know things have changed. I know sensibilities have progressed and like Game of Thrones might have been the highlight and the epitome of things. But I'm not that guy. I can admit Game of Thrones was probably for the most part great. It just wasn't for me. How many moments and aspects of that show were just amazing? I could admit it. The things they did to improve it were fucking awesome and they, I think they lost the ball at the end, but there you go. Is this show like that? I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think you you nailed some parts and you got some things right, but you can't have this epic story of the fucking hobbits and the stranger and the fucking Numenor and the head, the father of Isildur, and you're really fucking stretching it now. These aspects on their own are really intriguing and work well. Like, if you could edit this and, like I said, make chapter three, the, the four episodes you use the fucking hobbits in and nail that fucking stranger thing, the whole connection, the aspect, the, 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 the feeling you get invoked when you see the hobbits sort of thing, it would have been fucking way better. And then maybe do an expansion where you're doing these other stories and keep them connected, but you could have had one or two major plots here streamlined and kept the pacing of this thing fucking on point. It loses it, especially when you got to deal with like Elrond and Durant, and you got such good chemistry, and you could feel this working on the screen, but you, you don't get enough time at first. And when you do get time, you got them. Just not paying off the things that would have been paid off if you just had edited this thing and kept it segmented. Or well, like I said, there are shows out there that do this great. It's like episode four, it's chapter or whatever. And you delve into it and then you piece that connective tissue. Again, you know, maybe I fancy myself a writer and I'm too ahead of the game in my own brain. Not that I'm right, but you no, know, I seen these things coming. I knew who Hanrod was going to be, what his reveal would be. Now, the stranger, they're still leaving open, but we kind of know who it is. But we know it's at least one of the first five Istari that was sent to Middle-earth. Now, for me, I would have started there with this uh, series. I would have had a Valinor series and started it with that inner workings and then progressed it and then done chapters, but they're leaving that Valinor stuff behind, so let's say the Morgoth Army War, they did their own little recap sort of thing, and Galadriel's quest for vengeance or, you know, justice, which catapults the story, and her, you know, by any means necessary, you know, type of thing, and it works. I Believe it or not, I actually like the actress, I'm enjoying it. Again, though, you have to get through all these other things that they're growing in. Good actors, good setups, great cinematography, some decent music that invokes this thing. Like, it works when it works. But how many times are you going to cut back from the elf and the elf, what he's doing and what he's looking into and what's coming up, what's going to happen, the, you know, all the little hints of what's happening, and then, boom, I'm cut back, and I got to cut back to this, and, oh, Fucking shipwreck, and oh, who, do, who are we meeting, and what's gonna happen? Big fucking work. I, I get it, but this is 
why I don't think it's, a, for me, a great show. Enjoyable, yes. Gets my, you know, Lord of the Rings nerd blood pumping, yes. But I'm easily pleased that way. But taking a distance and stepping back, I don't know how many friends who aren't who haven't played D D with me every fucking week for thirty something years. I don't know how I'm gonna get them to watch the show and keep watching it. It feels like that type of show. Now, granted, this could have a cult following. It could cost correct and be one of the top shows ever made. I mean, it's there. It has those hallmarks, but. I think you have to interweave these stories better. You have to somehow get the heart and the soul of the show on the forefront and major screen time. I think you're selling it short. I think you're, you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face. It feels wrong. And that's an element that doesn't go away for me by the end of the series. That there's, I'm watching eight episodes, and when it ends, I get this missed opportunity feeling like there's something wrong. And I had this feeling like The Mandalorian, too. When you go back and look, there's so much wrong with that show. But the love, the charm, the, you know, course correcting that they did kind of feels right. And it works, and it makes you feel like you had an enjoyable ride, and I do with this. So again... Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Amazon Prime Show, I recommend it. But I think you'll have a hard time or you will recognize elements of the story that just don't pace right and don't keep you captivated and give you that in-depth you need because when the, when the last episode comes and there's this um, reveal of the stranger in a sense and he's got to go somewhere... And the Hobbit, who's been involved in all this, spoiler, decides to go with him. This moment's amazing, but it doesn't resonate on the screen as amazing. It just feels part of a, you know, jumbled puzzle that your brain's putting together. Again, this could be the new way things are going. You know, 51, I'm setting my ways. I... You know, I'll need to adapt to these type things and let them, you know, sink over me. But like Game of Thrones, I don't feel I am being catered to or my, all the high points are being hit when they're supposed to. I understand the dips and dives, you know, the way story, and I get it. And some of the stuff is amazing. I want to see fucking, you know, Durin and Elrond all the time, you know, just where they're going with things. But then they do these... Like, because when you got, like, an aspect of Is- Isildur, you know, the guy who cuts the ring off, Sauron, and so-and-so, and some aspect of the story eventually in the future, you see that in the Lord of the Rings stuff, you got to involve him growing up. you got to involve him, what he's doing, and what his father is, who his father is, his sister, and his calamities at his work, and his deceiving, he's going to be on the ocean, he's going to be a special... Navy guy and he doesn't want to and he's got to do his friends and then his friends this is involvement that could be really interesting and good but I got to cut back I got to go back and see what's going on you know with the hobbits and the strange and that disappears for three episodes but no it's filled up with the queen of Numenor and what's going on there and the subtleties of that and the subtleties of who's there and what's going these things are blossomed and grown but it feels like you just stop feeding them and you feel disconnected and disjointed you know a lot of times you'll get you know story one and two and you know they filter in the things and i think you could have done the by episode five bam give us a lot of the you know numinous like i get it and it's just a little bit disappointing so again there's the one twisty, you know, we pulled the wool out from under you, which is fucking bullshit. And it really lowers the score for me. Unless I go back and I see some things, I'm something I really missed that was so obvious, but was done good. So I'm going to give that just, you know, a wait and see. But as of now, it's bullshit, and it nearly ruins one of the fucking storylines they want you invested in. 
Because it has to go this way, right? That mountain has to explode. Someone has to have his land so, you know, orcs can move around and whatever. And But then you let the fucking villain live at a guy? Like, just fucking stop. I don't, it just feels, I don't know, tropey or, you know, whatever word you use when you analyze these things. It don't feel right. But again, the Rings of Power is something I would advise. I did enjoy it as a whole. I got fulfilled in a lot of the areas where I did read the Cimmerillion and stuff, and I feel connected to this world. It does feel like that. There's a lot of shit going on here, and pacing is super important these days for me. You know, there's a reason why Hercules, that fucking nutty fucking show was like 10 seasons or 8 and Xena was so beloved yeah we gotta follow the characters of the show and you've got like 15 of them and they're all super important they all have to be invested in time that's fucking hard so for that maybe give them you know some kudos that they pulled it off enough to make me enjoy it but you gotta trim this down you gotta streamline this stuff there's got to be a better way to do it, in my opinion. So I guess that's where I'll leave this. The Rings of Power. Lord of the Rings television series on Amazon Prime. I enjoyed it. But I'm not oblivious to some of the things that really annoyed me. One was that fucking, you know, you know sleight of hand bullshit with that fucking item. Because that pissed me off. And again, I'll, I'll try to look back on it. But... I will give it praise for some of the acting choices, some of the situation, the chemistry we see, some of these characters, spot on, good, fun, investing, interested. It's just cut up a little too much for me. It's just not giving enough time to breathe in the areas where I want to breathe in. And that could be okay. That could be like, hey, but just like Game of Thrones by season three, think about how good season three was with Game of Thrones. And I couldn't get to season four. I just couldn't do it. So for me to get to season three in Game of Thrones was a struggle. To finish the fucking thing was it was almost painstaking. Like, I don't care about certain things for season. Like, it just it became a little bit more repetitive to me and unbelievable stupid shit. And I, I could see this going that way. You know what? I could see this going that way. I could see it getting better. I could see it getting worse. But as of now... I'm going to recommend The Rings of Power. If you're a fan of the Lord of the Rings movies, I think you can get into this. I think you can get through it. I don't know if I want to say you have to be a sophisticated whatever, or your brain has to be able to compartmentalize like fucking eight different storylines that keep adding people and adding names and adding, you know, side characters. Like like I said, you got the Numenor stuff, right? But then you got the father, or you got the guy who finds Galadriel shipwrecked and Hanrod. And he's got a son. He's got a daughter. And his son is Isildur. And, you know, who's the daughter? And then you got to give them stuff to do and build up. And you're wondering what the fuck is going on with the fucking Hobbit. And the, I mean, is that supposed to work, right? It's supposed to be that way and work. I don't think it does it. I think it could be better. So, again, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. I am... Enjoying the Rings of Power, but I am recognizing some major flaws in it that can easily be cause corrected. This could be just, holy shit, look what season two did. Easily. And again, I could be making a mistake about certain things. But I'll, do it, I'll go over it again, because I will. I will watch the show again. So, happy holidays. My best to you and lo- yours. Love all around. Hope everybody's doing great. It has a beautiful, fun, happy, and an awesome holiday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.